The boss baby's at the top of his game in this movie, but I want to get your quick thoughts on how he would fare in a battle of wit. Boss baby versus, let's say, Skipper, the penguin. Skipper, hands down. <laughs> he would crush it. <laughs> like the little baby he is. No. Um, <laughs> that would be an interesting, uh, I think that could be Boss Baby too, that one. You and Alec? Huh? That would be, uh, we, should, we should have that. We should, ha we should get that going, that competition. I think Boss Baby <laughs> would out negotiate him, where Skipper's much more physical. I think uh, Boss Baby could filibuster and, right. and put Skipper to sleep. <laughs> That's awesome. Here's my favorite quote from the Boss Baby. Put that cookie down. Cookies are for closers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how much of Alec Baldwin's character in Glen Gary, Glen Ross is in the Boss Baby? You know, because it's Alec performing both roles, you can't help but not have Glen Gary, Glen Ross, <laughs> I think, in, in his role. And I think, you know, he, uh, even when he did that line, which is very funny, mm -hmm. and up on a play on himself, he just has a great sense of humor. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I think he can just even caricature himself from previous movies. And he was just great to work with that way because he, he kind of knows where the comedy lives, you know. And he's great at improvisation. He's just great at looking at a script and going, this is the punchline. And he knows how to work it and hone it. And it's just part of his, his genius. Because most people remember he started as a dramatic actor, but mm -hmm. he just, like, kills it and slays it in comedy. So there, there wouldn't be a boss baby without Alec. I found it interesting that the boy who has to deal with the boss baby is seven-year-old Tim, voiced by Miles Bakshi. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And his grandfather, uh, Ralph, Ralph Bakshi. Bakshi. Yeah, he actually, um, he created some animated classics like Wizards and The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And he cool also world. gave you your first job, right? Cool World was cool my world. first job. Yeah. And he was a great mentor so to me. And he, he taught me a lot about animation, which was still in, the hand-drawn days, mm -hmm. and uh, and so he gave him my first job. I got to give his grandson his first job. <laughs> but really, we just wanted a really authentic-sounding kid. And Miles just came in because it's your best friend's son. Oh really? Um, oh wow! To, okay. to do scratch, just to you know, because we we build a story with mm -hmm. just drawings and, and add voices to it. But he sounded so real and so authentic, and we needed that sincerity. Mm -hmm. And um, he wasn't a professionally trained actor, but he did have a younger sister that, you know, he knew the sibling rivalry of it all. So mm -hmm. he could just, you know, project that out because he had lived it. And that's right. why it felt like such a real performance. Most of us do too, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I love how this movie features modern animation, but there's also flashes of Chuck Jones yeah. and Maurice Noble. Yes, yeah. So talk about some of the details in the movie that inspired you from them, that you were inspired from. I think it was on a movie called Megamind where I realized a lot of animation is really looking very realistic mm -hmm. and all the surfacing, you can see all the skin pores mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. And I grew up in the time when I was a kid and seeing old Disney movies where it felt like you're stepping into a world of art and it was painted and it was very graphic and there was a, a lot of you know, great design philosophies in those old films. And it feels like we're at an age in computer animation where we can do anything we want, so why not right. let's step back and go make it more artistic. Let's let the air, uh, characters be more expressive and cartoony and broad. And so being fans of, of that era, golden era of animation, mm -hmm. everyone from anim animators, lighters, surfacers, everyone wanted to do something that, that stood out from all the other right. animated films. So we went mm -hmm. back to our roots. Awesome. They were very, very excited to, to kind of be creative and to be... To, to take this more stylized look and bring life to it, yeah. you know, versus try to, to match realism. Because we got to play in the, the imagination of a seven-year-old kid, mm -hmm. you know, what does that look like? Yeah. And, and so we really wanted it to stand out and be kind of like a film within a film, and it needed to have a different look. And we had a special team of artists that worked solely on the, these imaginative moments. Yeah, and it looks amazing. I loved it. And we also we also had a, a, a team working solely on on the baby fat jiggle. <laughs> yeah, that was a very <laughs> no important way. team task force. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's an innovation mm. to the computer sciences is baby fat jiggle. Yeah. Complicated <laughs> algorithms that make uh, you, but the, the, it was really actually uh, true because, you know, we, do, we don't, there's a uh, the quality to baby fat mm. that every parent knows, and we really wanted to capture that, <laughs> you know. Uh, other than the baby smell, we at least wanted right. to get the jiggle right. The jiggle. It's so cute and charming, and yeah, everyone knows it. Yeah, it's adorable, yeah, <laughs> definitely.